President Trump placed a call to the New York Times yesterday afternoon to refute some recent coverage of his administration from a rival paper. After two aides were indicted and a former policy advisor pled guilty, the president also wanted to assert, quote, I'm not under investigation, as you know. But that is not what his chief of staff, John Kelly, said on Monday. We're in great hopes that it wraps up. It is very distracting to the president, as it would be to any citizen, to be investigated uh, for something. Trump also said of the indictment of his former campaign chief, Paul Manafort, quote, and even if you look at that, there's not even a mention of Trump in there. It has nothing to do with us. Oh my God. <laughs> the president has a bone to pick with the Washington Post for a story about his reaction to the charges on Monday entitled Upstairs at Home with the TV on Trump fumes over Russia indictments, specifically the reporting that Trump's anger Monday was visible to those who interacted with him. The president told the Times, I'm not, I'm actually not angry at anybody. Meanwhile, while new reporting in Vanity Fair says the president is upset with the advice he received from son-in-law and unpaid advisor Jared Kushner, who uh, reportedly he calls bad blood. Speaking to Steve Bannon on Tuesday, a source briefed on the call said Trump blamed Kushner for his role in decisions, specifically the firings of Mike Flynn and James Comey, that led to Bob Mueller's appointment. And when Roger Stone recently told Trump that Kushner was giving him bad political advice, Trump agreed, <coughs> according to a source familiar with the conversation. Although I smell uh, another dirty layer to this, which would be Steve Bannon trying to push out Jared well, Kushner. Except you Who knows? You also but said it's just a Mess. Sam Nunberg and Ben <laughs> uh, oh. saying that Jared was the worst political advisor in modern American history. And <laughs> we've had reports from, from several sources um, and other journalists that Donald Trump has been trying uh, just daily to push Jared and Ivanka out of the White House and get them back. To, to save York. them. Daily. Which, no. which I do think aligns with the news reports that he's back in regular contact with Bannon. Um, because if you remember when that Trump Tower yeah. meeting was reported, uh, we never got to the bottom of how that was leaked out. <laughs> and the fact that, you know, Kushner um, was played, played, had played a role in setting it up as well. So uh, Bannon was suspected to have been behind that, and Bannon is suspected to be behind what's going on now with this, this offensive against Kushner. It's so comical, though, now to hear people <laughs> say, Jared Kushner's a terrible political advisor. You know why? Because he ran a newspaper and made buildings in New York City. He's not a political advisor. And by the way, that's not even a knock on him. I'm sure he was uh, fine at running no, the newspaper. I don't know. That's, but who's, we've all been saying that. Yeah. Everybody's been saying it's like, that. Yeah, it's, it's like how when Scaramucci came in to be the communication. Oh, my right. God. It's like, what do you expect these what people to do? They have no, they have no background have at all no in politics. No but, and they're not going to work magic right. into I, I mean, it's like. I, what are these? The foreign policy team, some the lower levels, you're like, what's going on? These are on? lower. George Papadopoulos. We just did Who's a piece on George Papadopoulos. What the? Came from nowhere. I talked to his professor at DePaul, who was who said he was absolutely shocked when he found out that George Papadopoulos was a foreign policy advisor to the president. He said he was a terrible by student. The, by the way, that's what Jared <laughs> oh Kushner is. One of his his professors said at Harvard, saying he's an okay guy, but I sure. I mean, I I going to be in charge of foreign policy. I, yeah. It, I don't think staffing is the main issue with this presidency, but it is an issue. It's a but, huge issue. And, you know, it was weird when Donald Trump kept giving Jared, like, an ever large portfolio. Middle East off, peace. Middle East peace and the opioid crisis and remake the government. In the end, what would have been a wiser thing for Trump to have done is to tell Jared Kushner, go run a staffing process for scary. me. Find really smart people. Right. Bring them into this government and help me out. And, the, the, and yeah, he, he just didn't do that at the beginning, and it could be the original sin. That, 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 that yep. would have worked, except for the fact that both Jared Kushner and Donald Trump believed that the fewer people they hired, the better. They didn't trust well, anybody in the state. They didn't trust anybody anywhere. That's why we have a government run by by very inexperienced hands. And, and Heidi, there was another extraordinary thing we're going to be talking to uh, Gabe Sherman about uh, in that piece that Bannon has already done a quick run through the cabinet and believes that things continue as they're going, that if there's a vote on the 25th, 25th Amendment, Amendment yeah. that... Trump will be voted out. Well, the timing on all of this is strategic, and that's what is scary, I think, for people in the White House, is that Bannon is also talking about these, this tax cut initiative kind of being the trigger, 
right? That right. if that doesn't go through, the party kind of starts to e explode and people turn on each other, people turn on the president, um, and it also corresponds and with by these the way, charges coming who's out. Wearing the wires in the White House. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah. Who's wearing, when you go into a meeting, who's wearing a wire? We don't know. No. And Neither also, does the president. Fascinating that Dina Powell and Gary Cohn, Must if you be. say Russia, they duck out. Really they <laughs> run out of the room, which is, by the way, smart move. If I'm either of their I'd lawyers, be out of the room. I would say if anybody even talks about, like, you can just see the Baltic like, turning states, around. go to the, you just get out. But if I'm, you hear back the in the USSR, about, leave. That's the weird thing about the Kushner timing, though. All of these things that we we're talking about in terms of him just being helplessly mismatched in this role are true. But it also is true that when, whenever this White House faces a crisis, somebody has to be the sacrifice. Somebody has to yeah. get strung up. So how is Jared Kushner, to be fair, to blame for what's going on right now with the status I, of the Russia investigation? I have well, a question for you. Do you think Powell and Cohn, do they get up and just leave, or do they make up an excuse before they, like, oh, you know, I got a call? I think it's they started coughing. But they, they, they just yeah. literally, like, coughing <laughs> effect. But, yeah. I, but, but it is a white thing. <laughs> but no, you're right, though. Uh, so Jared Kushner is now being nailed for uh, the stu one of the stupidest things uh, the Trump administration's done, and that's the firing of James Comey. Yeah. I'm, we, Mika and I have seen the interactions between Donald Trump and Jared Kushner enough to know that Donald Trump does what Donald Trump wants to do. Exactly. If Donald Trump did not want to fire James Comey, he would not have fired James Comey. And for anybody to try to put that on Jared Kushner, even if he said, yeah, dad-in-law, sounds like a great idea, that is, that is so... Uh, disingenuous by Steve Bannon to run around. By the way, I just got to say this. I've been calling Steve Bannon Mr. 33%, you know, because he's sort of, his strategy has put Donald Trump at 33%. You got to call him Mr. 8% now. Steve Bannon, Willie, has an 8% approval rating in America. We showed the poll yesterday, 8%. So I've just got to ask, if you're taking advice from a guy that has an 8% approval rate, his approval, I think Mitch McConnell's approval rating is double Steve Bannon's. So if you're taking, if you were still taking advice from a guy that has an 8% approval rating in America, then you are actually playing into those suggesting you're not fit to be president of the United States. Like the 25th Amendment's fitting kind of a little more snug this morning. Mm. Well, he helped make him president, even though Donald Trump doesn't like to admit that. Donald Trump knows that D. Bannon helped made, put him where he is today. And no, I think no, on some visceral level, he trusts that him. Troll? <laughs> Donald Trump right now? Pre by, by, by President Bannon, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah no, no. But he, but on some visceral level, he believes that that the instincts of Steve Bannon got him where he is, and at least in part, and that he ought to follow through. And if that's only worth eight to thirty-three percent, so be it. So, thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.